I'm Roman Vaxiar. I'm going to talk today about uh, long-term barriers to the spread of uh, development and uh, uh, barriers that hinder the, uh, uh, the wealth of nations, basically. And it's a joint project with my longtime co-author, Enrico Spolaure, uh, who's at Tufts University. And together we, uh, we wrote 10 papers uh, over the last 10 years uh, discussing uh, how um, historical barriers uh, prevent countries from uh, becoming rich. And uh, we're bringing these, uh, these findings together in a book project, and that will be the subject of what I talk about. So uh, the barriers we're uh, emphasizing are uh, uh, historical barriers that were brought about by uh, separation between populations that um, introduced cultural differences between them and in turn has hindered the spread of innovations from wherever they uh, emerged uh, to countries or societies uh, you know that uh, are far from uh, the core. So I, I'm going to give uh, three or four examples of that. Uh, the first is about the spread of the Industrial Revolution which started in England at some point uh, in the late 18th, early 19th century, and then spread first to Europe and then to other countries in the world. Um, and what we show uh, in uh, the first paper we wrote on this subject is that the Industrial Revolution uh, followed lines of ancestral relatedness. So countries that were um, closer culturally to uh, England adopted the Industrial Revolution first. And so even if they were uh, geographically very far from England, like uh, the United States, for example, or New Zealand or Australia, uh, because this cultural closeness uh, allowed a faster adoption of the technologies that had initially been developed in England. And um, I, I, we show in the paper that these barriers are temporary in the sense that over the course of history, um, uh, you know, and particularly during the 20th century, uh, the extent to which uh, cultural distance from England hindered the adoption of modern technologies uh, tended to become less and less important. Uh, and so today you see the spread of uh, uh, the Industrial Revolution to very far corners of the world, um, despite the fact that these places or societies are, uh, are um, uh, you know, very far culturally from England. Um, the second project is, uh, and sec second example I will discuss today is about uh, fertility norms, uh, which are another big component of the wealth of nations, countries that become sustainably richer usually do so um, as a result of, ha of people having fewer kids. And uh, this innovation, in contrast to the Industrial Revolution, started in France in the, again, the late 18th century, around the time of the French Revolution, and then it spread across the world. And once again, it spread, particularly within Europe, uh, in proportion to how far regions were from France culturally. Uh, there we use linguistic distance as a measure of how culturally close regions are from France. And we show that um, the spread of French fertility restrictions, which was the, the new norms that the French developed of having fewer kids, uh, happened first in societies that were linguistically close to France. Uh, there, a very nice example is that of Catalonia, which uh, got the fertility transition sooner uh, than the rest of Spain, in part because Catalan is linguistically closer uh, to French, and of course the Catalans are more generally, culturally closer uh, uh, to the French uh, uh, you know, than the rest of Spain is to the French. Uh, so that's the second example. The third example uh, is about the spread of democratic institutions during what's known as the third wave of democratization that started in the 1970s, specifically in 1974 with the democratization of Portugal and then with the demo democratization of Spain and spread around the world a little bit like a wave, uh, hence the term third wave. And we show once again that countries that were culturally close to basically uh, Europeans uh, tended to adopt democratic uh, uh, modes of governance sooner than countries that were farther uh, from them. And uh, uh, of course, during the third wave, uh, many countries uh, that were culturally distant from uh, Europe ultimately got the innovation. So it's again an illustration uh, that these barriers are temporary barriers to, to the adoption of better technologies, better uh, modes of demographic behavior, or better institutions, as the last example illustrates. So then the I guess the um, 
talk will conclude with a discussion of policy. So if the emphasis is on barriers uh, rather than on some features of societies that are more desirable, then policy should work to reduce these barriers by uh, fostering interactions between populations, uh, educational interactions, migration, uh, licensing of technologies, easier flows of ideas, etc., rather than emphasizing uh, the accumulation of features that people find desirable. And uh, so that's something I will discuss at the end of the, of the, of the talk and that will also feature prominently in our book, uh, which we hope to write over the next uh, year or two. So that was the summary.